What's going on, everybody? It is April 4th. We have a tiny Tuesday. Nope, not Tuesday. It's definitely uh, Wednesday now. Wednesday main slate. And I am joined once again this morning by fellow awesomeo.com writer, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Uh, yeah, we got a small slate to talk about. Hopefully, we'll be done in under an hour. Um, last night was. Uh, wasn't great if you if you stacked up the A's like I did. Uh, the Braves stack worked out, but it seemed like everybody was on them. So um, as they should be, the Braves are exceptional. Yeah, yeah, they are. Freddie Freeman and <laughs> and Albies, and so it started off well, and then hopefully you had a different stack besides the A's. Um, so I paid the price for that one, but tonight will be better, hopefully. Yeah, um, if you guys. Really enjoyed hanging out with us yesterday for close to 90 minutes. I'm sorry, but I don't think we're going to end up hitting that 90-minute threshold today. Only five games on the main slate. Um, we were going to take a look at the the earlier games, but by the time we would get this recorded and out to YouTube, you know, we'd be already pretty close to lock. So we'd rather just give you good information on the late slate instead of rushed information for the morning slate. So I'm ready to start if you are. Yeah, let's get it going. All righty. First game up on the slate is uh, Blue Jays hosting the White Sox. Uh, Blue Jays implied total of five runs. White Sox with a 3.5 run implied total. Uh, that's a 65% chance to win for the Blue Jays. We have Aaron Sanchez uh, for the Jays going up against Carson Fulmer for the White Sox. Um I'll just get it out of the way now. We're going to fully disregard Carson Fulmer. <laughs> Not the best. Um, let's talk about Aaron Sanchez. I think yeah. he looks oh, go ahead. really nice on FanDuel um, if you want to take a lower salaried guy. With that one and a half run gap, um, you know, Sanchez can get some Ks. There's still some life left in that arm. And uh, at 6,200, like, that's just a a great price on a five game slate. Yeah, on DraftKings he is 7800. Um so it, it's tough for me just because of some of the other guys we'll talk about later. Um he's he's priced near Manaya, he's close enough to John Gray. And I think I prefer those guys over him. True. Sure. Um but the 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 run total for the White Sox under 4. So Vegas likes Sanchez and mostly the Blue Jays bats. Um I don't know how popular Sanchez will be, but if he's going to get some ownership, then I probably don't want to be on him because I just like playing guys. Like, I'll play the chalk guy if they've got big K upside, but um, I don't know that Sanchez has big K upside here, even though the White Sox do strike out a lot. He does have some trouble striking out righties. So any he had a 16.06 whip per swing in 2017, which would put him at... 259th last year for guys that that qualified which is near the bottom so he doesn't miss bats i mean he could certainly get a win here but um i'm looking for a little bit more out of a 7800 dollars pitcher on this slate yeah that makes sense he's definitely less playable on DraftKings than he is on fanduel um to get a guy like sanchez in a matchup like he has on fanduel at 6200 mm -hmm. is I mean, that's a price play for me more than anything else. Yeah. I don't think he looks like any crazy world beater, but he's just, you know, criminally underpriced, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the slate. And if you're going to have a, a team and a, a 3.5 uh, implied run total, kind of got to take a look at it just a little bit at that price. Um, so I'll have a little bit of him on FanDuel. I like someone else significantly more, and anybody that's looking at the screen right now can probably tell that it's John Gray, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, yeah. Blue Jays bats, I mean, you can, in my opinion, you can just throw darts at a board and grab whoever you want. They all look great tonight. Carson Fulmer is 6.9 uh, Ks per nine from Steamer, 5.3 walks per nine, and a 592 FIP. Um, just really not good on paper. And that leads to basically whatever you want from the Blue Jays. Where you, what are you thinking from the Blue Jays? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on Fulmer. I don't think there's nothing I see that that makes me think he's any good against either hand. So I've got Blue Jays one through seven that I'm interested in. Um, 
my favorite guys on the Blue Jays would be Smoke and Solarte. Um, but, I mean, you can definitely go to Donaldson, Gritchick, uh, Russell Martin even at a weak catcher position. So um, I like I like one through seven, Travis at the top. Um, Granderson is 3,200. Like the Blue Jays just aren't priced up even though their Vegas total is, I think, the highest on the slate. So, yeah, but by, by 0.3 runs over the Cardinals, that's a lot. Yeah, and it, I don't know. There's you're just going to be able to afford pretty much anything you want on DraftKings tonight. The pricing's pretty soft, so the Blue Jays will be pretty chalky, I would think. But it is definitely a really good spot for them, so I like Moton. Yeah, Curtis Granderson is a hundred dollars above minimum on FanDuel tonight, Man. and like normally that. I'd do backflips over that, and I'll still I'm gonna have him in an overwhelming amount of lineups. But there's only so many places to spend in salary, and there's not really any pitching that's at a crazy price. You could almost be forced to upgrade from Granderson and 2100, like just because you don't have a choice. <laughs> it's so right. weird. He's so that's just so that's such bad pricing on Fanduel. Like the 3200 looks cleaner on DK. Yeah, that's a little better. You know, hundred dollars over minimum salary is is pretty crazy for Granderson. He's batting fifth against a righty, like against a righty that's not really competitive in this game mm-hmm. either. Yep. I'm gonna like the amount of combinations of Blue Jays that I'm going to have, barring any weird news that comes out between now and seven o'clock. Lots and lots and lots of Blue Jays. Definitely yeah. my my favorite stack of the day. Definitely my favorite team of the day. Um, there's really no one that I think is like fully off limits. I mean, I don't want Pilar Diaz just because I don't generally want an eight or nine hitter in general. But I mean, even those guys have like mild amounts of value for how like for how big of a gap in talent this game is. So yeah. now that we say that. White Sox win nine to one. <laughs> Fulmer, yeah, Fulmer, eight innings shutout. Yeah, this one's just for me. It's a no brainer. I don't really have any interest in anything on the White Sox, and all of my interest is on the Blue Jays. Did you like any White Sox hitters? Yeah. Um, well, I do like uh, Abreu and Abisel Garcia just because uh, Sanchez does give up some hard contact to uh, two right-handed hitters. Um, and these guys just have huge power. Like I think most days, some White Sox one-offs make sense. And I and I do like Moncada a little bit too. He's better against righties. Um, he's yeah. shown more power against righties in his less than a year of playing so far. He does strike out a ton, but these guys got a, quite a bit of power. So those top three for me for the White Sox, I think um, you can mini stack or one-off each one of them. So, and Abisal Garcia is thirty-seven hundred. That's ridiculous on DraftKings. He hit like probably the hardest ball on the year last night. Like that guy should not be 3,700, even against a righty. He's just a beast. I don't think that I would pay up for a Brayu tonight, uh, but I'm with you on Garcia. I think that as a one-off, um, I think he could be fine. Sanchez has like some Homer, Homer woes. So if I remember correctly, at least that's just off the top of my head. So, you know, Garcia can definitely capitalize on that. Abreu's just so expensive tonight. 4,600, yeah. like, I'd just rather have Smoke at 4,500 on DK than Abreu at 4,600 by miles and miles. Yeah, and then, so you're... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Sanchez, fourth highest um, home runs per nine on the slate. So you're right about the home run problems, too. Yeah, so if that if that goes haywire, it could go haywire in a hurry. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I just I have a hard time paying up that freight for Abreu tonight. I don't. I think there's just better options. And my ridiculous love for Smoke um, is probably going to put me ahead of him there. Like Smoke's four hundred dollars cheaper on Fanduel, and I think he's going to have a better night. I can't really go any other direction. Yeah, I get that. Smoke's an awesome play. No, not not hating on the Smoke play. I love him tonight. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't have much else. It's really just it's all Blue Jays for me in any sort of order, in any combination. Yeah. Granderson at 2,100 is... I would fully expect him to grade out as an AA from... Uh, in in Osmo's ranking? tonight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And that won't be the... There'll be a lot of A's and B's for the Blue Jays, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's head out to the Giants and Mariners, unless you have anything else there. <clears throat> nope. I'm ready to go to the next one. All righty. Uh, Giants hosting the Mariners. Giants with a 3.8 run implied total. Mariners, 3.5 run implied total. Uh, that's a Giants win percentage of 54%. Uh, we've got Cueto going for the Giants and Felix Hernandez going for the Mariners. Um, fun pitching matchup. You know, more fun probably four years ago, but it's still fun now. Um, what do you think about Cueto? Um, I just... Okay, so Cueto, he's 9,600. I just never play the guy. Um, he's just really frustrating to me. I've stacked against him a bunch. Um, I, I used to play him quite a bit. Uh, he's decent against righties. He's decent against lefties. Doesn't give up a lot of hard contact to either side. Um, or, I'm sorry, he does give up a lot of hard contact to lefties. Yeah. But um, So I, I'm more like one-offs against him. I, I'm not going to full stack, especially not in this park. Um, but I do like Cano and Kyle Seeger actually quite a bit tonight. Um, I think they they grade out pretty well for me. So those will be the two guys. I don't I don't really have interest in Cueto tonight, just because of I'd rather get up to Carlos Martinez and take the huge K upside for six hundred dollars more on DraftKings. Oh God, dude, this pricing is so different on both sites, and you know obviously it should be scoring systems are different and all, but. When you say pay up to Carlos Martinez on DraftKings, uh, Carlos Martinez is actually six hundred dollars cheaper than Cueto Whoa. on Fanduel. <laughs> Seventy nine hundred for Martinez on Fanduel. Cueto is eighty five hundred. Just weird, weird pricing uh, for Cueto. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, so that that's a slam dunk. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, for Cueto on DK, um, I'd end up with him. You know, we were we were talking right before we started. I had generated a big stack of uh, of DraftKings lineups, and Cueto was showing up in like 30% of those. And I think a lot of that had to do with just needing the salary uh, between mm-hmm. Martinez and Cueto. But Martinez was a similar amount of, of ownership in those lineups. So I think that just sort of by default, uh, people need to have an eye on Martinez and Cueto. I don't really have a preference to either one of them. Um I guess if I had to pick one, it would probably be Cueto, actually. Um, just because of that Mariners low run total, I think it might be a little bit easier for him, comparatively speaking. But I'm fine with Cueto. Like, I'm fine with Cueto. Um, I'm fine with Felix Hernandez. Neither of the guys are terribly exciting, in my opinion. And with Cueto being the most expensive pitcher on FanDuel... Like, I just, I don't see me paying up for him on a night where I've got a guy that I love miles more. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I'm, that's sort of where I'm at, too. Like, I just, I don't even know if I'm going to get up to that high. And, I, like, there's a pretty real chance that I leave $1,000 or more uh, on my DraftKings lineup. And I'm probably, I'm just going to make one lineup again tonight, as I usually do, um, and put it in the single entry stuff. So, I don't think I can go to Cueto on that, but I, I get it for MME if you want to get exposure to him. That's a super low run total in a really good park. Yeah, it's it, just, this whole pitching slate today is just uneventful. Mm-hmm. It's not anything that I have any particular interest in outside of Gray. Yeah, me too. Um, it is good that we're getting two separate perspectives on this show with you playing... You know, one lineup on DK, I'm playing, I'm bulk entering on FanDuel. We're getting very different perspectives uh, between the two, yeah. which is yeah. probably perfect for everybody. So people were probably getting sick of me only talking about, you know, the stuff that I play. So it's good to get both sides of the coin. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't be actively seeking out Cueto or, uh, or Felix. Um, from a bat's perspective... I don't know what I think of this game. It's just these this low run total is not appealing. After seeing everything look so awesome for everybody on the Jays, I can't imagine having a ton of guys coming out of either San Francisco or Seattle. Like I can get to like Brandon Belt I think is fine as a one-off. 
it doesn't yeah, make me like crazy yeah, excited or anything smoke, but what were you saying sorry then you can't play smoke that's the only problem with exactly. like yeah you know, other first baseman it's just smoke i think smoke is pretty far ahead of the field maybe outside of one other guy matt olsen for me but um I would agree. Theme, but like I, I just can't see myself playing brandon belt <laughs> uh, no i like i would Tonight. i would not expect it um i think that he works as like an off the beaten path first baseman option but the the chasm between smoke and belt on paper for me is monstrous today yeah. that's where i'm at too yeah as for other one-offs like i just don't really see it in this game low run total makes it not interesting uh or do you see anybody that jumps off the page for you? Not really on on San Francisco's side. I just they're just not a fun team for DFS for me. I don't think that anyone has a particularly good matchup. I, Belt's fine. Um, McCutcheon is pretty cheap, but I think there are just a lot of other options I have ahead of the Giants guys as one offs. As stack. Um, and I'll probably just ignore the Giants, hope this is a pretty low-scoring game, and then maybe get some exposure to um, Cano or Seager on the other side. What makes you like Cano? He just hits righties so hard. Um, let's see. I'm going to look up his his hard contact numbers. I like He's a guy I always consider against righties. He, he's got a 12.1% K rate and almost 40% hard hit rate against righties last year. Um, since going back to the start of last year and uh 375 woba over 200 iso he just doesn't strike out and i just want guys that don't strike out especially against pitchers that don't have elite stuff like i don't think cueto is an elite pitcher anymore which isn't a hot take but yeah, sure. i think he's gonna put the ball in play and cueto gives up a lot of hard contact to lefties so okay yeah yeah he, was, he, he doesn't grade out well on for me and i was just you know, I wanted to hear that other perspective. 3700 yeah. on FanDuel at second base. He's the most expensive second baseman by $100 over LeMayhew. But I yeah. would, I'd be looking more at, like, Moncada or Solarte. That's fair. Um, Cano is fifth in the MLB in average exit velocity on the season also. Really? So I saw that he was, yeah, he he's at 97.9 uh, miles per hour. Wow. It's only ten, it's only ten batted ball events, so okay. it is. But that's kind of a like something that I look at, like guys that might be getting a little bit unlucky. They're they're crushing the ball, but they're hitting it right at people. Um, yeah, no, I I wouldn't have expected him to be tenth like yeah. anymore. So, hmm, that's something I'm gonna want to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, Giants Mariners game is one offs at best. Nothing <laughs> magical. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Brewers and Cardinals. So, Brewers with a 4.3 implied run total. Uh, Cardinals 4.7 implied total. Uh, that's a 46% chance to win for the Brewers. Uh, Julius Chassin is on the hill for the Brewers. Carlos Martinez on the hill for the Cards. Uh, we touched on Martinez a little bit earlier. Uh, what are your thoughts on Chassin? Yes. <clears throat> so Chassin is, um, he's actually a little bit similar to Martinez in that he struggles against lefties. He obviously doesn't have the the, uh, the stuff that Martinez has, um, but against lefties, he's got a 560 XFIP, 154 whip, um, almost five walks per nine, and only 15.6% K rate. And that's all going back to last year. Um, against righties though, 23.5% K rate, half the walks per nine, um, 53% ground ball rate. Uh, and he, so he's just night and day against righties and lefties. That's nuts. For me. So, like, I see there there are some guys that I like for the Cardinals, um, specifically Fowler and Matt Carpenter, 33 and 3,700. Like, these aren't two, two guys, again, that are just underpriced. So I don't see how I'm going to get to the $50,000 cap on DraftKings. <laughs> Just because everyone is the, like the pricing is just Charmin Ultra Soft, so it's, yeah, it's it's a really hard lineup build on DK if you want to spend all your money. Well, it, it it's not if if you can get over the mental block of not using 
all your salary. True. So, like, if you just want to stack a team and, and ignore salary for the most part, you know, you don't have to leave five k on the table. But you should be able you to leave... roll it over to, to tomorrow, like a yeah. like a golf tourney. <laughs> yeah, save some of that up. Yeah, I'm with um, you on Fowler and Carpenter uh, for the cards, particularly on DK. Um, I don't think they're the same sort of like Fowler's twenty two hundred on Fanduel. He's he's going to be in a large majority of my lineups just sort of by default. Um, and Carpenter looks good. They don't have the same sort of amazing pricing on Fanduel, unfortunately. Um, twenty two hundred for Fowler on yeah. Fanduel. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like if you if you're starting with Fowler and uh, Granderson as two of your outfielders, like you've only spent. Forty three hundred dollars, and they're two of the I don't know ten best outfield plays on the board. Yeah, you just uh, there's going to be so much money left. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a ton of interest in Brewers bats. I don't really want to run head on into Carlos Martinez. Um, yeah, I like some Brewers actually. I like the lefties. I was going to say uh, like uh, I can get to Yelich. That's probably it for yeah. me. I like. Uh, Thames, Sean, and Yelich. So I actually like a little bit of a, and this is more for DraftKings because these guys are actually priced up a little bit. Yelich forty six hundred, uh, Shaw four thousand, Thames thirty nine hundred. They all have power, and Martinez really really struggles against lefties. So if if Carlos Martinez is going to be popular, and he he probably will be because people want to use up a lot of that salary, and he's got a lot of K upside in most matchups, then. I like a little bit of a Brewers mini stack with those three guys and then Braun sandwiched in between them. No, that makes sense. And that's something we talked about yesterday where, you know, if you're not looking for that higher end pitcher in your own lineups, it does make some sense to, you know, fully go the other way and take a look at some of the Brewers. I just don't love their pricing. Mm -hmm. um, like Lorenzo Cain is 3900 on FanDuel. I can't imagine spending that much money on him against Carlos Martinez. Uh, like, Yelich is 3600 Travis Shaw is 3900 They're just really, really expensive on FanDuel, comparatively speaking, to some of these other value teams. And yeah. to go against someone like Carlos Martinez, who is good, um, makes it a little tricky. You know, he's, he's the highest salaried guy on DK for a reason. Now... Yeah. Martinez on FanDuel, very, very playable. Oh, yeah. That $7,900 price point is nuts. Um, I'll have... I would guess that he'll be... Probably my second most owned pitcher behind John Gray. That, that's my expectation, at least, just from looking at it now. Obviously, subject to change, people. Don't yell at me if something weird happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, on FanDuel... He, he may not have, like, the best chance at a win or whatever, but he's probably got the best chance on the slate to strike out eight or nine guys, maybe outside of Gray. So he's he's a, he's a good play. Like, I, I don't, like, dislike the play on DraftKings, but um, I just think he might be a little bit too owned, and I don't think it's a it's a perfect spot for him. So No, I, rather... I'm with you on, on, on DK. Uh, he doesn't stand out at that price point yeah. to go and do any backflips. On he's FanDuel, guy, he's more than anything, that's a play on his salary. Yeah, and he's a guy that can get really wild really quick, especially against lefties. So if if he's 30% and then all of a sudden he gives up a couple bombs, like you're you're gonna be sitting pretty if you've got some of these brewers lefties. Definitely. So. Yeah, I don't, other than that, I don't I don't really have any hitters that I'd need to touch on. Fowler is the guy in this entire game that I think grades out best for me. Um, having any sort of chunk of the Cardinals is is fine by me. They're probably my second favorite team behind the Blue Jays. Although I just don't... I don't know. The pricing in this game is so weird compared to the pricing in everything else. Everything else looks so low and soft. And here yeah. it's... I mean, it's heavy on the Brewers on DK. That's really big salary. Yeah. 4,000 plus on those first four guys. 3900 for Eric Thames, too. So you're paying mm -hmm. up for it for the Brewers. But, I mean, today's the day to do it. If you're going right. to fade Martinez, you're probably going to have the money to do it on DraftKings to grab whatever Brewers you want. For sure. Um, yeah, I'm just – I want to make sure we're not missing anything here, but I don't think we are. 
It's not uh, not the most magical day for the Brewers Cardinals game. No, it's not. Um, A's and Rangers. Uh, A's with a four point three implied run total. Rangers with a three point five implied run total. Uh, A's fifty nine percent chance to win. Sean Manea is the starter for the A's, and Doug Fister is going for the Rangers. Um, I think we could disregard Fister right out of the gate. Yes. Okay. Um, no Fister for me. No. No Fister whatsoever. No comment on the Fister comment. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Manea? Yeah. So he was brilliant uh, in his first start. Seven, two-thirds, seven Ks, one earned run, um, 16.8% swing strike rate. And that that's going to get the attention of a lot of people. People like game logs, and people will go right back to him. <clears throat> and I think that that's a really good play here. Like, I, he's going to be the, the guy I consider, at least one of the guys that I consider for um, one lineup. And if he's healthy, which he looked like it, the, the game log says he was healthy, um, there's no reason not to go back to him. He was he showed a ton of promise early in the season last year before he got hurt, and then all of his strikeout numbers and everything went down. So like the yearly yearly numbers in 2017 don't look great, but he was he was awesome at the beginning of the season and towards the middle of the season. So I like Manaya a lot here against this strikeout heavy, lefty heavy um, Rangers team. I've liked him for so long. I had him a lot in a in an Angels OOTP season, so I watched him grow and mold get grow into a future uh, Cy Young Award winner in a in a sim that I did. So I have a, an irrational love for him. Um, I don't love him on FanDuel all that much though. Second most expensive pitcher tonight. Yeah, he's he's the, a similar price on DraftKings. Yeah, he's 8,200, 8,300 on FanDuel. So yeah. it's more of a DraftKings play. I think he'll be pretty popular, but um, yeah, I like him a lot more on DK. Just yeah. being a, a middle of the road price on the entire slate, but I can't imagine paying. I, I don't want to say it like that. Like I think that he would be fine to be used on Fanduel. I don't see a ton of downside to it. Um, I just again greatly prefer John Gray. And if I'm gonna pay up for someone, I mean, I just wouldn't. I, there's, I don't want to pay up for Manet or Cueto. Right. Um, on a day like today hitters now um i think there's a lot to like on the a's i'll probably be going back to that well um other than chris davis i'm pretty much in for any of the top six guys uh yeah i love the a's i'd be careful a little bit with the righties um i mostly so like i love jed lowry and agreed uh matt olson like those are two of my favorite plays on the slate um it's gonna be a tough between between um olson and smoke for me and thames i guess uh but i i love olson here he's got huge power obviously uh fister really struggles against lefties gives up a ton of hard contact over 40 percent last year um his whip is one of the highest on the slate um just Walks a bunch of lefties. You don't want your guys to walk, but no. um, Olsen's a free swinger, and if he makes a mistake, it's it's going very very far yeah. uh, into the stands. He's so, gonna put that stuff in orbit. Yeah, yeah. Lowry, and, uh, Olsen, Joyce, I think all look really good. Um, I don't love Semyon as much on DK. Uh, I don't love that price point, but at three thousand on Fanduel, I can get there. Yeah. But, I'm I'm cool having a, a decent amount of A stacks. Doug Fister doesn't exactly put the fear in me. <laughs> yeah. Um so like Chris Davis, you can play him against pretty much anyone. He's always a candidate to hit a homer. But Fister is actually he's okay against righties. Like he's Yeah, I wouldn't be really confident good. paying forty seven hundred for Davis tonight. Yeah. Although um, you'll have the money. Like if you want to do it, you can on a night like tonight you can get there. Yeah, that's the thing. You can just go to a full A stack and still be able to do with whatever. Like you can do whatever you want with the rest of your roster. So that's why it's tough. Like I do like Davis, but I I don't think just like one like pitcher versus hitter. He's like the best individual play. But in the context of an A stack, um, he's gonna be a hard guy for me to leave off. 
like if you're stacking up Lowry, Olsen, and Joyce. Agreed. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have Chris Davis as a one-off, but uh, he's mm-hmm. stackable. Yeah. Um, Chris Davis is the fifth most expensive, well, tied for fourth most expensive outfielder on the slate today on FanDuel. So for me, it would be really hard for me to pay that sort of premium in a situation where he's going, you know, righty, righty, don't really love the matchup. Um, so as a one-off, I wouldn't look that direction. I'd be more likely to go to, like, Tommy Pham or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. I think Anything on the Rangers? There, because I find it scary. Scary Against Manaya. Yeah. Um, Just so many lefties. Like, well, no, you... Shinsu Chu has been so bad against lefties for a decade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Since yeah, Joey so Gallo I'm... was in diapers. Gallo, yeah. He he homered last night, the Gallo chalk. Um, but, yeah, I like Andrews and Beltre a little bit here. They just don't strike out against righties. Manaya, even when he was good last year, he did give up quite a bit of hard contact against against righties. So... Those would be the two guys I wouldn't stack the Rangers, just sort of a leverage play. And Andrews makes sense at a really weak shortstop position. So Can we talk for a second? This is sort of uh, outside the realm of DFS. Sure. I'm fine with, you know, new sabermetric style batting orders. Can we talk about why Elvis Andrews hits third? He was good last year. Like, he was legitimately good. Um I don't know. Doesn't I mean, he, exactly fit the profile of a standard three hitter in my mind. <laughs> no, he he doesn't. I mean, he's more of like, I don't know. At least for the most of his career, he's been like a leadoff type guy, or like he was hitting seventh a couple of years ago. I was going to say, like, I would expect him to hit eighth, ninth, depending yeah. on you know lefty righty matchups. I like I'm pretty familiar with him because he was a former Brave, so like I've you know I followed him closer than I follow most guys. And I understand that, you know, the way that lineups are built now are different than they were when I was, like, a Mm -hmm. kid. But if Elvis Andrews was hitting third in, like, 1994, radio hosts would lose (laughs) their mind. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that he's not sort of the same hitter that he was a couple years ago. But I, I just, I look at that every morning. And every morning that I enter batting order stuff into my sheet... I just feel like I'm making a typo. Like, oh, the, you know, the all glove shortstop should not be hitting in the three hole. <laughs> it's just, it's one of those things that I can't get to. I know this is off, yeah. off topic, but no, but that's the thing. Like, you you gotta make adjustments. Like you said, he's, he's a different hitter than he was a couple years ago. It's true. Um, last year, he struck out, especially against lefties. Like, he's a guy who played a ton against lefties last year because no one. No one ever played him because no one wanted to play Elvis Andrews. But, like, he had a 358 Woba, over 200 ISO against lefties last year. He doesn't strike out that much. And I think he's just a pretty good hitter. He's not, like, the prototypical three hitter. But um, I just there must be the, some. Oops, sorry, go ahead. There's got to be something behind it. Like you said, there's something in the advanced metrics that, that put Andrews as a good third hitter. I just I look at that lineup just for today specifically, and I don't understand why they don't flip Andrews and Gallo. Like there's, you're creating a situation where you know if this game is close, that the A's are going to bring in a lefty reliever to face Chu and Gallo back to back. Whereas if you bring and if you bump if you flip Andrews and Gallo, then you don't have any back to back lefties. No, it's three yeah. straight. Robin Robinson Chu then Gallo three straight lefties. Why, why oh, not yeah. break that up? Well, I don't know. Gallo's Gallo's a free three Ks from Anaya right there, so there you go. Yeah, um, I don't know. That that's my rant for today. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm weird like that. You're supposed to put your best hitter is what I hear at the two spot. So like that's why at least that's what the advanced metrics said a couple years ago that the two spot is where you put your best hitters. Like Mike Trout should have been batting second for forever and stuff like that but yeah i would rejigger that first one i almost want to start a rangers ootp season and change the lineup just to like satisfy myself yeah right, enough <laughs> enough uh lineup talk and nobody cares about this stuff uh we good on e- uh a's rangers did you have anything else you want yeah. to touch on 
Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Final game. This is much easier when there's only five games. Uh, Padres and Rockies. Padres with a 3.5 implied run total. Rockies with a 3.7 implied run total. Uh, That's a Padres 48% chance to win. We've got Clayton Richard going for the Padres. And my favorite play of the day, John Gray going for the Rockies. Um, Talk to me about Richard. Richard? Okay. Yeah, I have have a soft spot for Clayton Richard. I think he's, he's better than what he gets credit for. Um, I think he's really underpriced here at 5,600. He's coming off a nice start against the Brewers. Um, it's not a, it's not a perfect matchup by any means, but I think there is some K upside against guys like Story and uh, even Blackman at the top. Clayton Richard was really good against lefties last year. Um, and then yeah, Cargo Para towards the bottom of the lineup if he if he's in. Um, so, like, for this price, I think, and in this park, I think it's a really good play. The only problem with Richard today, on DraftKings at least, is that I don't think you need to go down to him. Like, I don't think he has the highest upside on this slate. Um, so, like, I, I just don't think you're going to need to to save $3,000 from John Gray and get down to Richard in order to pay up for some more bats. That's the only problem. I so, agree. It's, like a if this, hard, it's a hard sell. Yeah. If he was on the slate yesterday at 5,600 in this matchup, then I would be all over him. Like, I would have played him over probably, like, Flaherty and guys like that. But um, Yeah, that's, just, a, that's a really nice price point on DK. Yeah, but you just don't need to save salary. That's the problem. No. He's so. $1,400 more expensive on FanDuel. Like, for me, he's not playable. Well, yeah, not, I, wouldn't. I mean, for me, I'm not playing him, I guess is a better way to say it. Right, when he's so closely priced to like gray and um carmart and guys like that then i don't think there's really a reason to play him on fanduel outside of just like game theory he's gonna be really low owned yeah so like if you were gonna run out okay so you wouldn't run out gray and richard together on DraftKings, even though they're my probably my two favorites so if you were gonna do like if you tried to do richard and whoever you want to pick you have so much money left on DraftKings. Yeah, and even if you take, you could pretty much take the most expensive guys for the rest of your roster, and probably still have salary left over. So, like, I don't want to leave five grand on the table and play. Yeah, that's probably Richard too much. Can, yeah, like there's there are like Gray and Manaya who I think have higher upside than than him at this price, and then I'll figure out the bats after that. So totally agree. Um. So for Gray, uh, for anybody that's been looking at the screen this entire time, you'll see that there's a lot of green around John Gray's name, and it doesn't really matter whether that's in the fan go- FanDuel columns or the DK columns. Uh, but he's grading out, for me, miles better than anyone else on this slate. A lot of that has to do with the price. Um, I think that it's relatively low, in my opinion, for a guy of his ilk. But... Even just on this slate itself, I'm going to have the majority of my lineups on FanDuel uh, be anchored by John Gray. Um, I I have a hard time getting away from it. The Padres have a 3.5 run implied total. That is next to nothing. Gray's steamer line, 9.4 Ks per nine, three walks per nine, and a 389 FIP. Like That's just a dream for me. Really, the only bat that I'm worried about would be Hosmer. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody else is just, it's going to be righty on righty or, you know, guys that I don't exactly have a lot of fear in their bat. So I can't get enough of John Gray today. Yeah, me too. Um, And he's probably going to be the first guy that I plug in. So I I don't care. He's going to be chalky, whatever. Uh, I'll eat the pitcher chalk, like I said, when it is a guy that has huge K upside in a, in a good matchup. Like I, then I don't mind um, eating the chalk. Like you, you go down the lineup for the Padres, like Margot, Perello, Renfro, uh, Villanueva, if he's in it, um, even like Austin Hedges. These guys are all around like 30% K against righties. And Gray strikes out righties at a 30% clip. He's just – He's so, so good against righties. Does not give up a lot of hard contact. No. He's got a pretty good whip. Um, a lot of ground balls. <laughs> he, 
he's just so good against righties, and the Padres don't really have any lefties that scare me outside of Hosmer. But sure. it's not like Hosmer has huge power. So I, I think he's just a really strong candidate to get 8 to 10 Ks here. Agreed. So. Outside of Hosmer, so Hosmer's projected on base percentage from Steamer is 354. The next highest guy in this lineup is 319. They've got yeah. four guys in their lineup today, excluding the pitcher, that have a projected on base percentage below 300. <laughs> That's, yeah. So I, I don't know how you don't just lock in Gray. I mean, on FanDuel, it, it is a little bit different for me if I was playing over there because. You got to have like the nut pitcher. And mm -hmm. I don't like, I just think he's got a really strong chance to be a top two or three pitcher on DraftKings. So I don't know how you really fade him at only 8,500. It, it's really hard on DK to not have him be one of your two pitchers. He, yeah. I, I can't imagine a scenario where he is not incredibly owned. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll differentiate elsewhere and just plug in Gray. Yeah, I just he's I can't get off of him for today. It's every single sign for me points in a direction of like you need to smash this dude and everything you have. So I didn't expect myself to want to watch much of a Padres Rockies game starting at ten o'clock tonight, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you'll still be in it and you'll be sweating. You know. That would be nice. Yeah, I mean, we'll know pretty early because uh, if the Blue Jays play like garbage, uh, I could probably just shut the computer down and take a take a siesta because <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to have an overwhelming amount of them first. Yeah. Um, uh, Hitter-wise, uh, I'm not fond of anything really on the Padres just because of my love for Gray. Um, and I, while I think that Hosmer's in a good spot... Um, I don't really need to spend that 3700 at first when there are guys that I like way more at that position. Um, I, I don't want to run head into my, my main starter. So for me, I'll mostly have very little Padres. Yeah, I'm with you there. I, I don't think I'll roster a Padre tonight, um, hitter-wise. Um, I probably won't end up on Richard, like I said, either. So probably no Padres for me tonight. Um and then the one guy on the Rockies that I love is uh, Nolan Arenado. He's one of the few guys you can spend up for. Um, one of the only guys that's near 5K. He's 5K on DraftKings. And just crushes lefties. He's not a Coors baby. He is a really good hitter outside of Coors. Um, so he just crushes lefties. And Richard does have some issues uh, with, with righty power. So... Seeing what Arnado has become is just fascinating to me. He is just a completely different player than what he was as a prospect, and it's he, it's insane. He's awesome. I love him. So do so I. I just like any chance. Any, anytime he's going to be decently low owned against the lefty, like he's just he's guy I'm really strongly going to consider. So he's the one guy that I'm probably really wanting to pay up for tonight. Okay, like I per I'd, I'd go to at least for me. Let's see, what's the price difference? A comparable difference. So, Arnado, 5000 on DK. Donaldson, 4600 um, 4500 for Arenado on FanDuel. 4100 for Donaldson. Donaldson's my guy at third if I were building out, you know, just one lineup. Um, but I like the Arenado play. Uh, just being able to get that righty on lefty matchup. Yeah. Always advantageous for a guy projected to slug 574. <laughs> yeah. He's just so good, so good. Other, but I don't, I don't really have much on the Rockies that stands out. Um, I'd be okay with a Trevor Story flyer if I needed a shortstop. Yeah, you're home run hunting with Hori, with uh, with Story. Um, so thirty seven hundred on DraftKings. It's not a not a great position tonight. Um, and like I said, Richard has problems with righty power. So yeah, so no Story's problem. the fourth most expensive shortstop for DK. He's oh. fourth from the bottom on FanDuel. Really? Uh, yeah, 20, he's only 2600 on on FanDuel. So for me, Story stands out as a little bit better of a value. You know, getting that righty-lefty matchup. Um, I, I wouldn't mind using Story as a one-off. Particularly, you know, at short where he's probably one of the better 
like f- just bat guys yeah. at the position. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we're looking at projected 466 slugging in general. I would assume that that's been, from a split perspective, it's probably a bit higher against lefties. So I think Story can be a guy that people use on FanDuel without any real issue. But again, it's one of those cases where you probably have the money to not have to spend down. Right. <laughs> money is uh, money is going to be interesting tonight. I'm anxious to see how many lineups I create and how much I'm comfortable with leaving on the table. Because it's going to be a number that's higher than normal. Yeah. But that's going to be, like, you'll be able to see for tournaments, like, where people are just going to, like, fall into some plays. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're just going to end up with people paying up for, like, Chris Davis and... Um, Charlie know, Blackman. Or, yeah, Blackman, just because they don't want to see $1,500 left over. Um, so they might swap on to... A play that's not as good but more expensive so Blackman's I'd an Sally. interesting one i'm anxious to see what his ownership is on either site tonight oh, because yeah. of how much money's out there like he's the most expensive outfielder on fanduel by a thousand dollars yeah so you think he's gonna be owned i mean I'm, I'm not gonna play him i'm not gonna play him and i don't expect him to be owned but i'm anxious to see if he is because people aren't comfortable leaving salary on the table yeah, that's fair. And I want to see if that if that number is higher than I would expect. Yeah. Kind of give it, use that as a barometer for like how sharp a particular tournament is. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else here? This is a pretty uneventful slate. Yeah. Uh, well, I can just like sum up where I'm at, I guess. Okay. So for pitchers, I like um, so I like Martinez a little bit, um, Gray, Manaya, and then. Some interest in Richard, but he's more of an MME play for me tonight, just because I I don't think I need to go down to him at fifty six hundred. Okay. Um. For as far as like stacks go, I like the Blue Jays, of course. The A's are probably my favorite stack. Um, mostly Lowry, Olson, Joyce, and then Chris Davis. You you want to throw in there probably. I do have some interest in a Brewers stack, and then. Um. I do like the Cardinal side a little bit as well. Chassin can get himself into some trouble, and the Cardinals do have a lot of power, a lot of guys that can make you pay. So, Okay. Um, you guys have heard me spout it out the entire time. John Gray is the guy that I'm doing backflips for uh, from the pitching side. Uh, as of right now, he's in more than 50% of the lineups that I generated this morning, and I don't see any sort of change for that. Uh, if I were going any other direction, um, it would probably be Carlos Martinez and then uh, Aaron Sanchez as my like three major guys. Um, I'll probably have a small trickle of Cueto or maybe Felix Hernandez, but um, those guys, are, those first three guys, are going to be the majority of my ownership. Um, Blue Jay stack is the one I'll be heaviest on, and I can go really any direction. Um, whether it's three, four, or five guys, um, anybody all the way down to Martin is perfectly fine with me. Today's one of those days where I wish the catcher was a legitimate position on FanDuel, so I'd feel a little bit more comfortable having Martin. Um, but grabbing a chunk of the Blue Jays is, is going to be my first focus. And then um, I like the top half of the, the Cardinals lineup. I like them a little bit more on DK than I do on FanDuel, but... Uh, Dexter Fowler is going to grade out as an amazing play today. For me, I fully expect Dexter Fowler to grade out as an amazing play uh, in Osimo's rankings tonight. Yeah. Um, so he'll be someone. Don't be surprised to see Dexter Fowler as one of the uh, spotlight hitters tonight. That's just a guess. I haven't seen anything yet. The rankings are probably coming out in like an hour or so. Um, but I would say Fowler has a really good chance to be on there hitting leadoff against Chassin, you know, that, that all looks really good to me. Yeah. But everything leads me to John Gray and the Blue Jays, and however many additional options I get funneling guys around that is going to be sort of my variance. Um, I'm going to be more than okay hitching my wagon to that stuff and then figuring it out from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I love Gray, love Benaya. Um Yeah, so I'll, I'll have the um, spotlight 
pitchers out later today, and those will be based mostly off Osmo's rankings. So those will be out in an hour, like you said, Josh. And then uh, there's also still NHL going on, believe it or not. There's three yeah, get your NHL tonight. plugs in. Yeah, yeah. So I do the NHL um, stacks of the day and then the spotlight um, spotlight players of the day. So last night I had Taylor Hall, who had a four-point game. It didn't end up with him on my lineup, but he had, he had four points. So if you listen to uh, my spotlight plays, he probably did okay. Um, there you go. But, uh, yeah, so there is still NHL going on. So that's just what I wanted to say. So read up on those three-game slate. Um, so I'll start looking at that right now and get the spotlight pitchers up for you guys later. Yeah, uh, also check out NBA stuff. Um, slam dunks will drop at probably around 4 o'clock. We'll have NBA rankings and ownership throughout the day. Uh, not the most uh, eventful NBA slate as well, so... If you're gonna, if you're looking to dip your toe in any other waters, tonight's a decent night to try baseball if you don't normally do that, or try basketball if you don't normally do that, or try hockey if you don't normally do that, because you don't have to have sort of the same normal time commitment uh, tonight. Five games late for baseball. I think NBA is six, so nothing sort of overwhelming. You can you can really give it a shot, and we're gonna have a ton of content up today uh, across all of those sports. Um, anything else you want to touch on? No, this is a, it's a pretty straightforward slate, I think. So leave some salary on the table if you want to get a little bit crazy. Um, that would be my advice to get a little bit different. Don't don't make don't pay up for guys that you don't think are in great spots just because they're more expensive. So. so I expect to get this question: How much salary would you be comfortable leaving on the on the table? Yeah, um, just like I haven't started making a bunch of lineups yet, or trying to make or trying to get down to to my one lineup um but just in general i think like a thousand dollars is like a pretty in general i'm, I'm comfortable leaving a thousand dollars on the table especially for slates like this but it might be two thousand like sure. if i if i want a four-man stack if you want a four-man stack the a's then and play mania and gray you you don't have to pay up at catcher or anything so um yeah like a thousand to 1500 let's say would be probably my max we're but. in the exact same ballpark there i usually use a thousand as my i'm comfortable with this threshold and then if the slate adjusts you know you can get up to like 1500 and not really have too big of an issue there comes yeah. a point where you're you're eventually not making the right decision by leaving so much on the table right but uh, i think that 15 you can get to a thousand to 1500 on a day like t today without any high end top flight pitching yeah all righty i think that's it uh if you guys enjoyed this video you know please like and subscribe uh we're trying to churn out as much content as we can and being able to grow this youtube channel is you know one of our main priorities right now we'll have baseball videos like this almost every day basketball videos throughout the rest of the nba season uh live streams before lock which we did last night myself and chris Spaggs. Um, we'll have another one of those tonight. Uh, we're just we're churning it out. Basketball rankings, baseball rankings, hockey rankings, uh, golf rankings should be out. I'm guessing today if they're not already out. Uh, I would imagine we'll be seeing those soon enough. Um, I don't have anything else, so thank you guys very much. Go to awesomeo.com. URLs up there. Uh, chances are uh, you might spell it wrong the first time. Don't be sad. When you do and that website doesn't exist, uh, try changing that uh, O to an E. Uh, it'll get you a little <laughs> bit further. Um, but thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, follow Jake on Twitter, at Jake Hari, correct? Yep. Yeah, and then find our stuff on awesomeo.com. Best of luck tonight, guys. Yeah, good luck. Have a good one.